This is Hall County Sports, brought to you by Green Ford on Browns Bridge Road in Gainesville. Check out the latest deals. Remember, when you go green, go Green Ford. By Mountain View Auto Repair, a full-service shop for all of your automotive needs. Call Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair, 770-535-7278. And by McEver Road United Methodist Church. Visit us on McEver Road in Oakwood. With three worship services, Kids Town and Adult Small Groups, McEver Road United Methodist Church, dedicated to transforming the world through the good news of Jesus Christ. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Hall County Sports Television. I'm your host, Gary Glenn. Well, the second full week of football season is behind us, and we're concentrating largely once again on the gridiron this week. Our game of the week saw West Hall jump into a lead, but later, 28 unanswered points led Chester T to a 41-14 win over the Spartans. First-year quarterback junior Jordan DeGraff was our player of the game. He ran for 78 yards and two scores and passed for 116 yards, helping set up more points, and he ran the offense well. Montre Tate ran for 74 yards, including a 33-yard score. Brandon Thompson added 94 more yards on the ground. And the Chester T D gave up the early 57-yard touchdown run by Rico Jones of the Spartans and a late 56-yard touchdown pass from Chandler Newton to A.J. Stevens. Other than that, they played really well. Next up for Chester T is a home match with Johnson, and that will be our next game of the week. Earlier this week, I had a chance to drop by Chester T and talk to the War Eagles head coach, Stan Luttrell. Congratulations on the win. I, I thought you played well, and uh, I thought that after they scored, your guys responded. Uh, our guys did a uh, did a really good job of uh, for a very for the first game of the year to uh, handle some adversity, whether it was coming from behind or it being a close game of the half. And very proud of the way our guys uh, just showed up, ready to play. Well, offensively and defensively, I thought you had things clicking pretty well. Right, it started out a little sluggish on offense, but uh, our defense played real well in the first half. Uh, really, two plays away for the game of. Uh, being able to hold West Hall to a shutout, um, but they scored. They had two big plays, and that accounted for their 14 points. And you know, probably one of the best defensive efforts that we've had around here in a while. And real proud of our, our coaching staff as well as our players. Scoreless first quarter was that a matter of both teams kind of feeling each other out? I know it was definitely on our side. Um, you know, we're doing some some different things on offense that we're trying to get used to, and our kids are trying to get comfortable with. And uh, had a lot of guys that. Uh, that were playing for the first time on a Friday night. So uh, I felt like that's exactly what it was, and as well as just letting our nerves settle and, and getting used to it being Friday night. Uh, our player of the game was Jordan DeGraff, and we gave it to him not just for his stats, which, was per, which were pretty impressive, but also just for his ability to run the, the offense. I thought he did a really good job handling the ball. Yeah, Jordan's doing a great job of uh, learning the offense, learning his role within the offense, and being a distributor of the football, whether it's running the option and or passing, all that which we didn't have to pass that much on a Friday night, but he can definitely throw. And uh, you know, very proud about how he's growing up and maturing within the offense. You know, Jordan's came through our Junior War Eagle program, and it's kind of been waiting his turn, and and um, his time's now. As, as good a win as that was, we got to put it behind you because you got to get ready to play another. Somebody that you're pretty familiar with, Johnson. Yeah, we we get Johnson coming to our uh, home opener this week, and you know Johnson is uh, struggling a little bit being 0 and 2, but they're a very good football team. Coach Frill and his staff have done a good job. They're the typical Johnson hard nosed, physical. Um, they have a great running back. Uh, uh, they they have a, an offense that uh, that'll come right at you, hit you in the mouth. That we're going to have to figure out a way to stop. And then defensively, they're a, you know a three four team that uh, that are flying around. They they've got several guys that play both ways, and uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see if that'll be an advantage for us or not. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big night at uh, War Eagle Stadium. Hopefully, we'll uh, come away victorious again. Well, you're our game of the weekend, and you seem to play pretty well on television. Yeah, hopefully, we'll continue that. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. All right, now the Knights will come into this one off of a loss to East Hall, 41-17. Now, Johnson had actually taken a lead when Steve Rodriguez had a 25-yard field goal after they had a scoreless first quarter, kind of like our last game of the week. Uh, the Vikes got the lead back on a 19-yard touchdown pass from Cameron Davis to Austin Mahaffey, and A.J. Millwood 27-yard run gave Johnson the lead back, but a 95-yard kickoff return and a 21-yard scoring run from Jamon Witt sort of broke through the Knights' armor. Witt added a 55-yard interception for six points at the end of the game. Eastall, by the way, will play at Elbert County this coming Friday. The Blue Devils beat Westland 27-10. We're back to call some of the action. Well, at least with a guy who does call some of the action when we return. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce. I'm the new pastor here at McEver Road United Methodist Church. 
And one of the things I've noticed here in Hall County is the number of churches that are here, and that is a great blessing. But it can also be a problem if you're trying to find a new church or you're investigating Christianity for the first time. There's so many churches and it seems like there's so little time. Well, we invite you to be our guest at McEver Road United Methodist. We will not give you a high pressure approach. You can come in, make up your own mind at one of three of our worship services. We have three diverse worship services, one at 830, which is a gospel format service. We have a 10 o'clock service, which is not contemporary, uh, but it's uh, something more edgy and different, and we'd like to invite you to that if that's your style. And then at 11 o'clock, we have a traditional Methodist service. So we'd love for you to come be our guest and uh, come and see. Proper maintenance is vital to the life of your car. Let the experts at Mountain View Auto Repair take care of all your vehicle needs. Owner Danny Hammock has over 50 years of experience in the automotive business and has earned a reputation of being honest and fair with his customers. We try to treat everybody like I want to be treated. You know, that works out pretty good. And uh, try to keep a price as low as possible to keep people coming in and give them a good price for their money. We do whatever turns up on a car, any kind of work, any kind of car, just uh, it don't really matter. We do it all. People say, when are you going to quit and retire? I say, oh, probably never. You know, as long as the Lord let me work, I'll probably be here working. I've been trading with Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair for about 20 years. I've always been very happy with his work. It's very easy for me to talk with him. He doesn't talk down to me. He explains it in a manner that I can understand. Most of my customers are like friends here. You know, I've known them so long, and I count them as, most all of them as friends to me. Remember, when you want honest, reliable service, put Mountain View Auto Repair under your hood. What does Applied Images Incorporated mean? It means real people answering the phone. It means real people servicing your business or school. Quick response along with quality production is demanded in our world of business today and no one knows that better than Applied Images Incorporated. After years of working with graphic artists, marketing managers, public relations departments, architects and engineers, we have developed an extensive experience in our trade that is second to none. We excel in our knowledge of graphics and printing, signs, banners, posters, brochures, training manuals, for schools and businesses. And now, custom t-shirt printing is available. You must see our line of t-shirt designs. What does Applied Images Incorporated mean? It means quick response, quality production, and real people answering the phone. Churches, businesses, schools, picnics, trade show displays. Call us today for any printing or graphics needs that you may have. Applied Images Incorporated at Gainesville White Print, 312 Bradford Street in Gainesville, 770-534-2086. Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is Hall County Sports, and I'm your host, Gary Glenn. Well, another big part of any game that you see that's played on an organized and a regular basis is, is a part that they really don't want you to know that they're there, and that is the officials. you got to have people to call the game and enforce the rules, but they don't really want to be a part of the action so much as just to see that the action flows smoothly. And uh, bring to the show now a man that we want to have to talk about that sort of stuff is the president of the Lanier Official Association, Tim Tipton. Tim, we've had you on here before. Mm -hmm. Good to have you back. Thank you for having me back. Now, pretty much, do you agree with what I said in my opening remarks? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you, you used to hear all the time the best officiated game were the ones that the officials never got noticed. Now that's changed a little bit in that you want to be noticed, but you want to be noticed for the good things, how professional you were, how you communicated with the coaches, how you administrated the ball game, you know, positive things, not, not negative things. How has officiating changed, or has it changed over the years that you've been involved? Yeah. And, and at first, how many years have you been doing this now? This a uh, couple of weeks ago, I began my 26th season. So, so you've, you've seen just, you've just about seen it all. Yeah. So and how's it changed? The, big, the changed? biggest change is, is, of course, the 
the style of play that you see nowadays with the spread offenses, uh, the West Coast style offenses. You know, we used to call varsity games with four officials hmm. on Friday night, wow. and uh, and that was when I first started. Then it progressed to five. Now it's progressed to six, and even now we're doing seven, which is what you see in the college and the NFL. And uh, that's probably the biggest change uh, is just the way the offenses has changed. You know, most people back in the day would run that veer or run that wishbone, mm -hmm. and those offenses have kind of went away for the most part. And, and now you've, you've got the no huddle thing, and sometimes they, no they seem to be waiting on the officials. You that's exactly right, and that's they call a lot of them call it NASCAR, where they're in a in a fast mode. And what we teach our referees is, you know, same steady pace. You know, spot the ball, mark it ready for play, give everybody a chance to get set and ready. And because there are a lot of things we have to do in between that dead ball period when a team's usually huddle, huddling, everybody's mm -hmm. got to be counted, both mm -hmm. sides of the ball, line of scrimmage has got to be counted, make sure you got seven men on the line. So there are a lot of things that are that are happening right before the ball snaps. So it's a challenge. You kind of alluded to that in your remarks, Tim, training. Uh, mm -hmm. That has to be a lot more extensive than it used to be. It is, and uh, people just think you're you're grabbing guys off the street and come, come officiate a ball game. And um, you know, nowadays, it, for me, it almost seems like football season never ends because you're preparing for the next year. But we actually have off-season off meetings. We've done that for a couple of years now. We do some online testing where guys can log on at home and, and take an exam, uh, and that's been real convenient. But we'll have three off-season meetings, and usually the last one is around spring football time. Mm -hmm. And we're putting a lot of guys out on the field in those spring scrimmages, the schools that want us to come and, and be a part of that. And uh, we'll put guys out there to train them and get them some varsity snaps who may have only seen rec ball or, or middle school games so, so far. Is it a, pr a progression then up through the peewee leagues, the rec ball, the middle school, the it JV is. and all that? It's exactly the way it is. And, uh, you know, the way you get comfortable on the field is more and more snaps. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, you've officiated sports, and, and you talked about it in your crews here that, that uh, uh, video the games. Right. Everybody's got a job to do, and you can't really watch the ball game. can't watch the ball. you got to watch your areas of responsibility. And uh, it changes from watching a game on television to actually going out on the field and, and, and officiating the game. So that's the hardest part, get the rookies not to watch the game. That's exactly right. And you start out putting those guys on rec ball, trying to get them to do as many rec ball games as they can. We start them out assigning them middle school games on Thursday, and they'll go out there with a with a veteran crew. You know, there's four guys, and not all of them are rookies. Right, right. you got to have a white hat that knows the rules and knows the enforcement of the penalties, and you got to have mentors that are there with him, bringing him along. And, uh, and you get feedback on guys. You get it from uh, fellow officials. You get it from coaches, and they, they'll tell you, you know, this guy's doing a good job. Uh, he communicates well. Uh, he's in good position to make calls, you know, and that's how you progress up the ladder. The rule changes, and they usually are one or two from year to year. What should there we are. be looking out for this year? Well, this year was probably one of those years where most of the things we read about changes are things that fans or people watching the game wouldn't even yeah. know about. Uh, but probably the big one is uh, what's called the chop block. and. Uh, it's not something that you saw a lot uh, called on the high school level because we teach guys, uh, all officials are taught, if you don't see the entire play or block, you, you don't call it. You've mm. got to see the entire thing. And the way the chop block was, uh, one guy could be engaged up high and another guy could go low, mm -hmm. as long as the block was simultaneous. Uh. Now that has changed. There is no more high-low blocks, period. Uh, if somebody's engaged up high and somebody goes low, even though it's at the same time, it is what's now called a chop block. And uh, plus, I, I told you about us moving to six man and seven man, mm -hmm. and now they've defined more of the umpires watching the guard and the centers, uh, two guards and the center. Uh, your wing guys are keying on a tackle, plus the referee is keying on a tackle. Wing guy may have a tight end on his side. So those guys are trying to watch those initial blocks. And uh, the chop block was one. There's, of course, a point of emphasis on uh, uh, concussions. Mm -hmm. has been for a couple of years. Proper helmet fitting properly, uh, you know, making sure that mouthpiece is in and that mouthpiece hadn't been cut off, uh, making sure that all four chin straps are buckled, uh, illegal helmet contact, 
you know, they're really focused on that this year, making sure kids are uh, tackling the proper way and, and uh, you know, and the coaches do a great job of trying to make sure that's happening too and they've just, it's just been a point of emphasis. And then the other things are minor things uh, like the eye black under the eyes, no more words, no more logos, you know, uh, yeah. wristbands that uh, you're talking about spread offense and no huddle. You know, they have to be wore on the arm. They can't be on the belt. Uh -huh. And somebody says, why, why all these crazy rules? Well, somebody got hurt somewhere. Somebody went to make a tackle and tore their fingers up. That's why play cards have probably got to be wore on the wrist. It, it, usually when there's a rule or a point of emphasis, it's because there's been an injury somewhere. Yeah, your, your pants are different now too, Tim. You don't have those white <laughs> knickers anymore. You got to uh, look like trousers now with a stripe. Yeah, and we saw that in the NFL a few years ago, and it was mostly on cold weather games. Uh, I think they're, they're – uh, they, if they had on long sleeve shirts, they had to wear the black pants, and uh, they came out with a hot weather pair. And that's what everybody's wearing. Uh, pretty much the GHSA left it up to the associations to decide whether they wanted to wear the black ones or not. And I think the whole state went, went with mm -hmm. the pants. Mm -hmm. We were about the only sport in officiating that didn't wear pants. Everybody else, baseball, basketball, yeah, yeah. They, they all wear pants. And uh, our guys, so far, the, the, the feedback has been very positive. So. Um, all right, and you now have you, are you using game film and all that kind of stuff to evaluate yourself? You actually do that. That's now. how we actually are evaluated now by the state. Uh, in 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 years past, they would send a guy, usually a retired official, to a ball game. You might or might not know he was there, and he'd set up in the booth or in the crowd, and he would evaluate the crew. You'd get feedback from the state. Now it's all done by video. So we're we we actually purchased a camera this year. We've got a retired official that is being assigned games just like the guys on the field. And he goes out and he shoots video for us. And mm -hmm. then we use that to train our group. And we also are sending that to the state to be evaluated. Uh, I'm going to let you do a little recruiting here, brother. Yeah. If somebody wants yeah. to get in touch with you about becoming an official, what do they need to do? The best way to do it is to go to our website, www.lanierofficials.org. And there's a tab on the website that says, how do I get started? And if you'll go in there, put in your information, uh, hit submit at the bottom. It'll email that to our officers. Uh, a couple of us will get back in touch with you, give you all the uh, info that you need about when, to, when and how and where to get started. Um, and, you know, it's too late for this year. Right. But we have people submitting applications all during the year. So they're plugged right into our database. And when we send mass emails out to the group about we're doing an off-season meeting and if you want to come, come be a part, we're doing registration night and handing out new manuals, come and here's the registration fee. All they got to do is show up and we'll go from there. Well, I understand we'll see you Friday night. Our game of the week is, uh, is Johnson at Chester. You That's be correct. I spoke to Coach Luttrell today and let him know our crew was coming over there to work the game. So uh, very excited to be in Hall County. Well, good luck to both of us on Friday night. Maybe we'll both have a good game. Thank you. All right, Tim Tipton, the president of the Lanier Officials Association. Got more football coming up in just a moment. Your one-stop spot for complete auto repair is the Auto Works Shop on Spry Springs Road. On everything from oil changes to brakes, new and used tires and tune-ups, even the big jobs like transmissions, the specialists at the Auto Works can have you up and running just like that. We talk about value, the Auto Works will not be undersold on used tires or any locally priced repair job. Ask about special discounts for students and teachers with your ID. That's the Auto Works at 6671 Spout Springs Road, just past Flowery Branch High and Spout Springs Elementary Schools. Phone 770-967-1732. This program is also brought to you by Long Street Cafe, now with two locations in Gainesville, 1043 Riverside Terrace and 405 Pearl Nicks Parkway. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Monday through Saturday. Long Street's got the reputation for Gainesville's fastest drive through and the best fried chicken you'll ever sink your teeth into, plus veggies, a full salad bar, and great desserts. Check today's menu at www.longstreetcafe.com. Call a friend and meet them for a hearty meal at Long Street Cafe, where they put the home in the cooking. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce. I'm the pastor here at McEver Road United Methodist Church. And I was thinking this morning about how complicated life is. We have a lot of choices to make in life and not a whole lot of guidelines to do it sometimes. It's like being a parent. You know, I'd hoped when I was a parent that our kids would come into the world with uh, their instructions printed on their bottom, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. And parenting is so much guesswork. 
I'm amazed that we hear so many people talk on TV and we can go into the bookstores and see the books and the folks on TVs that, that have all the answers, but you and I know that they don't have all the answers. And the answers aren't as simple as they tell us sometimes, that all you have to do is smile just right or say this thing or feed your children this and everything will be all right. You know, Jesus gathered with his followers after he was raised from the dead on a mountain in Galilee. And in Matthew 28, it tells us in verse 17 that even then some doubted. And I think that's interesting that the church was formed with some doubt in it. We don't have all the answers. We have some answers, but we don't have all of them. And if you'd like to be part of a community that doesn't have all the answers, but they can help you be at peace with the questions, well, then we invite you to join us at McEver Road. We invite you to come by and visit us at one of our worship services. Won't you come and see? If you are looking for a quality used car, then look no further than the car store on McKevra Road between Gainesville and Buford. You won't find clunkers or junkers at the car store, just vehicles you'll be proud to own. At the car store, they can finance you on the spot, no matter what your credit is. They have a variety of plans. You can even phone your payments in. At the car store, they've been giving outstanding service to the community for over 20 years. At the car store, everybody rides. Come on down to the car store. We can make you happy. My name's Bob Watson, and I guarantee it. There are moments in life that you wish would last forever. Dreams that really do come true. Treasures worth protecting. And a future to prepare for. Turner Wooden Smith is with you every step of the way. Established in the Gainesville area in 1905. Turner Wooden Smith has become Northeast Georgia's largest independent insurance agency by offering professional service at competitive prices. Turner Wooden Smith, ensuring your future since 1905. We're back. I'm Gary Glenn. This is Hall County Sports. Earlier in the show, we gave you the Chester T point of view on the game of the week. Now we turn to West Hall. They scored early and they scored late, both big plays. The run by Jones and the pass from Newton to A.J. Stevens were both better than 50 yards. Coach Mike Newton says the start and the end were pretty good. Still got to tweak the stuff in the middle. Like we said before, um, you know, you started and ended pretty well. Just had to kind of tweak that stuff in between. Yeah, we do. We made some mental mistakes and some mental mistakes offensively and defensively. We had we had some good drives there. The opening drive was pretty good until we got the sack. Uh, we just got to clean some things up offensively and defensively. We're not talking about big things. Are we tweaking little things? Or no, what? little things. Just blocking assignments on offense and, you know, responsibility assignments on defense and, and things like that. Stuff that's correctable because we got the size. We got, we got some ability here that we could do some better things. And sometimes those little things all together add up to some big uh, things. Little things get you beat. Everybody knows that. If you don't take care of the little things, you're going to get beat. And they can't, uh, they can't get unnoticed. What would you take away from the game, bright side? Bright side, we didn't give up. Our kids fought hard. I thought our defense played hard for three quarters, and uh, our offense showed some good signs in the passing game. Uh, you know, against East Hall, we didn't have much passing yardage. Uh, we showed some good signs of running the football. Already got a couple practices under your belt this week, so you put that beside you. You've been pretty spirited. Oh yeah, we always had spirit. We just like <laughs> you just saw, we had a good spirit practice uh, this afternoon, and then uh, you know Monday morning we had everybody there, and we had a good practice Monday morning. Well, now all of that, though, for good Orioles in the past, you got White County now, and they had a big thumping by Gainesville the other night. Well, you know, that's going to happen to a lot of teams probably, but White County is, is a very good football team. They're, they're a lot like us trying to find their identity, and, uh, you know, we got to come because they're, they, they run a hybrid defense that just blitzes from everywhere. Their offense is an option team, which is a responsibility that you got to take on, on defense. So, you know, we, we got to do a good job against them. Any one main key thing, or is it just tightening up everything? Well, uh, just tighten up everything. Our special teams, we did a lot better on our special teams than we did against East Hall, and we worked hard on that, so I was really proud of our kids on the special teams. Uh, we just got to tighten up a lot of things. All right, good luck, Mike. Thank Thanks. You. West Hall next playing at White County. The Cleveland Warriors were thumped by Gainesville 40-3. to Deshaun Watson wound up with 332 yards of total offense with four touchdowns, two on the ground and two through the air. Gainesville will host North Hall on September the 16th. They'll have a bye week this week. The Trojans, for their part, they made a run at Jefferson late, but the Dragons held on to win 38-28 despite four touchdowns and 222 yards rushing from Imani Cross. Next up for North Hall is St. Pius in Atlanta this Friday. Pius shut out Benedictine Military 35-0 this past Friday. Flyer Branch kept on cruising. They crushed Madison County 64-7, the most points the branches scored 
in Class Quad A. Candler Coker, the quarterback, threw for 199 yards and three touchdowns, two of those to C.J. Curry, who had 105 yards receiving, and he ran, Candler Coker did, for 56 yards and another score. Jeremy Haley had 139 yards rushing and three scores. Jimmy McIntyre had 85 yards and two touchdowns. The Falcon defense forced a safety, and Shad Jenkins returned a fumble recovery for 19 yards and six points. That in the fourth quarter. Brantz goes back to Winder to play Appalachia on Friday. The Wildcats are 0-1 after losing 38-35 to Hab Central back on August the 26th. Also in other local action, Riverside lost to Banks County 21-0. Eagles will play at Landmark Christian on Friday. Landmark is 2-0 after the War Eagles crushed Athens Christian 69-28 last Friday. Kings Ridge beat Lakeview 13-3. The Lions will host Prince Avenue this coming Friday. Prince Avenue went to 2-0 with a 20-0 shutout of Georgia military. Back to wrap it up when we conclude. Proper maintenance is vital to the life of your car. Let the experts at Mountain View Auto Repair take care of all your vehicle needs. Owner Danny Hammock has over 50 years of experience in the automotive business and has earned a reputation of being honest and fair with his customers. We try to treat everybody like I want to be treated, you know. That works out pretty good and uh, try to keep the price as low as possible to keep people coming in and give them a good price for their money. We do whatever turns up on a car, any kind of work, any kind of car, just uh, it don't really matter. We do it all. People say, when are you going to quit and retire? I say, oh, probably never. You know, as long as the Lord let me work, I'll probably be here working. I've been trading with Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair for about 20 years. I've always been very happy with his work. It's very easy for me to talk with him. He doesn't talk down to me. He explains it in a manner that I can understand. Most of my customers are like friends here. You know, I've known them so long, and I count them as, most all of them as friends to me. Remember, when you want honest, reliable service, put Mountain View Auto Repair under your hood. There are moments in life that you wish would last forever. Dreams that really do come true. Treasures worth protecting. And a future to prepare for. Turner Wooden Smith is with you every step of the way. Established in the Gainesville area in 1905. Turner Wooden Smith has become Northeast Georgia's largest independent insurance agency by offering professional service at competitive prices. Turner Wooden Smith, ensuring your future since 1905. There are hundreds of options when choosing apparel or promotional items at J. Geyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. We're all about quality and competitive pricing. Sports items are in stock. Look for special pricing on Letterman jackets, corporate apparel, corporate gifts, and custom embroidery. All local high schools should check out the line of spirit wear and trophies. We're also offering custom screen printing available for any team sport. Be on the winning side when you choose J. Geyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. Locally owned and operated at 250 Dawsonville Highway, Gainesville. Call 770-718-0062 or on the web at jgeyer.com and trophycaseltd.com. Gary Gunn wrapping up this edition of Hall County Sports and Softball. Games will beat Chesity 4-3 as Katie Woods got the win and went 1-2 for two with a walk and a run scored. North Hall's Courtney Guerin struck out 7 and Alex Kennedy had 3 hits as the Ladies Trojans beat up on Johnson 14-2. Okay, time now to name our Athletes of the Week and both of them are going to be from the Gainesville Red Elephants this week for the boys, Gainesville quarterback Deshaun Watson. What a game he had against White County. And for the girls, Kaylin Walden of Gainesville Volleyball for her all-around play last week. A couple of things to remind you about some things coming up this week and those local tryout dates for the Stars and Stripes baseball tournament. Yeah, that's going to be at North Hall. Also this weekend at North Hall on uh, Saturday morning, beginning at 9, the WAR Girls Cheer Camp, hosted by the North Hall Competition Cheerleaders, will be going on. That starts at 9 o'clock in the gym. Girls ages 4 through 12 invited to compete. That's our show for this week. I'm Gary Glenn, Hall County Sports. Hall County Sports is brought to you in part by Green Ford on Browns Bridge Road in Gainesville. Check out the latest deals. And remember, when you go green, go Green Ford. By Mountain View Auto Repair. 
a full service shop for all of your automotive needs, call Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair at 770-535-7278. And by McKeever Road United Methodist Church. Visit us on McKeever Road in Oakwood with three worship services every Sunday morning, Kidstown and adult small groups. McKeever Road United Methodist Church is dedicated to transforming the world through the good news of Jesus Christ. 